you know, you started eight years ago. Yeah. And now you're suiting up some of the best of the best. I know some of the guys I'm watching on ESPN, you suited up. <laughs> Shannon Sharp. Floyd Mayweather recently, your appearance is your new business card. And so in my world is A, B, C, D, which is appearance, behavior, communication, digital footprint. I'm still focused with children. It's easier to raise strong children than to repair a broken man. I'm not a role model. That's not who I am, Scott. I'm a real model. I'm a real businessman. I'm a real entrepreneur. I'm a real college graduate. I'm a real husband, right? You have a higher chance of being a businessman, being the husband, rather than going to the league. I mean, I can't be 6'9", 290 pounds. No offense to LeBron. I love LeBron. <laughs> All right, welcome to another episode of Dapper Gentlemen. That's actually not what it's called. I'm just kidding. I actually um, like that. <laughs> hey, hey, maybe. Well, I, the truth is, I got the idea from one of my buddies, one of my buddies out there. So, gotcha. Cody. So, um, I am excited about today's episode. You'll notice something a little different about me today. I am wearing my favorite suit. There's a couple reasons that this is my favorite suit. And I have the guy who suited me up right here, sitting to my left. This is Mr. Kenneth Boggs, or better known as KB. Yes, sir. How long have you been doing suits, dude? Uh, about eight years now, my man. Eight years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been good. So KB is a dear friend. Um, we, we have good times together. He knows his music. You know, there's not a lot, a lot of people out there that understand true good music. That's true. Anytime this guy sends me a tune to check out, I know it's good. Yeah. Every single time. So that's a huge shout out to you because I... There's like four or five people, literally, that I trust when a, when a song <laughs> comes my way, and you're one of them. That's awesome, um, But he has such an amazing story. Um, he has inspired me on so many levels uh, with some of the – we've had some great chats and really just an incredible story. And and I, I hope that I can, you know, um, ask questions today that, that allow you to kind of share some of that story. For sure. Um, but uh, he's done some amazing things in his life. He is, uh, he's here in Utah now. Grew up in Com Compton. Or Crenshaw. Crenshaw. Yep. How far away is that from Compton? Not that far. It's like yeah. down the street from each other. Not Been here far. in Utah for how long? About, oh, 10 years now. 10 years. Has it been yeah. 10 years? Yeah, I can't believe that. Man, wow. life going by fast. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he came out here and, and found himself a beautiful woman, married her. But she's playing rugby at BYU? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. She's great. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so just tell us, I, tell us what you're up to. We know, we know that you're, you're a man of many suits. You won't see this. I mean, do you, do you wear regular clothes outside of, you know, working out? I don't own a pair of jeans. It's you don't? Just, it's either I'm in my sweatpants or I'm in my suit. You, you would never see you in sweatpants ever outside <laughs> maybe at the house. Probably outside the house or like I said, gym. I'm at the gym or if not. Yeah. I'm in my suit. I'm on the go doing something. You are the essence of a brand. Like, he knows. <laughs> you see this guy out and about, he is his brand. He wears his brand. I mean, how, how do you feel about brand? I mean, you do this. This is a choice. It's yeah. not easy to wear suits every day. Like, I'm, you know, I actually, I love wearing a suit, but right. it's not easy to do. So No, 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 no. It's not. I mean, like, honestly, Scott, you know how it is in today's time. Um, your appearance is your new business card, right? And, uh, you know, you come from a background in the sales world, right? right. Which, uh you know, ABC, right? What does Always that mean? Always be closing. Exactly. Always. <laughs> right? right? And so in my world is ABCD, which is appearance, behavior, communication, digital footprint. Ooh. Right? So, and I, I could break that down. Yoda so. moments you get out of this guy. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah, so like I could break that down real, uh, real quick. Um, uh, obviously, A, your appearance. Obviously, like I was alluding to, it's your new business card, right? Um, B, how's your behavior, right? Where you're an a hole or where you're a good person, yeah. right? C, communication. I focus on the the uh, EQ instead of the IQ, right? So how's your people skills, your emotional intelligence, everything that nature, and obviously D, digital footprint, how you look online. So, well, you've you've done an incredible job, an example to me, and uh, you know, you doing this. I've I've mentioned your name to a few people in different meetings just yesterday. Uh, who was I? Who was I talking to? It was oh, it was Andrew. It was Andrew Mickelson, the MMA fighter. You you might not even know. Who, do you know who he is? No, Andrew? no, no. Uh, yeah, well, probably by his face. Yeah, he, his he's face. coming in next week for a podcast. Um, nice. But he knew who you were. He knew who you were. Nice. Like I mentioned to you, <laughs> and and oh, the, the suit guy. Yeah, yeah, man. I know, I know who he is, and your network is big, and oh, I, I and you've you've done an incredible job building a network, and uh, you know because you do good work, I know for a fact that people are sending 
you know, their friends and family your way. Yeah. Have you seen that? How's your network played a role in your business? Oh, my gosh, man. Uh, I tell people this all the time. I believe the biggest currency is networking and connecting people. Money will come. And so, you know, too many of us try to be transactional. You know, I'm like, hey, get to know the person. You know what I mean? Because uh, kind of more synonymous. Like when I create somebody a suit, I like to create their own story. So I usually ask a lot of questions because I'm like to collect yeah, yeah, yeah. as much data yeah. as like, yeah. hey, man, tell me who you are and stuff like yeah. that or whatever. So just having that genuine relationship just changes everything. No doubt. I, I can tell you right now, um, KB on numerous occasions has reached out just randomly saying, hey, Scott, I got a guy I need you to meet. You got to meet him. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it's the thing is, is it's so genuine. You're not ever waiting for K, KB to be like, yeah, man, I'm going to take a cut of this or that or no expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, you had mentioned that, you know, connecting people with others. Mm -hmm. In fact, I got Clarity coming in next week. So oh, next week already? So Clarity is coming oh, in next week. I didn't week. know that. I didn't know so, that. So um, <laughs> he connected me with Clarity. I mean, you, you've you actually sent me uh, to, to different, uh, you know, other entrepreneurs mm -hmm. uh, that, that run businesses that, that are now customers of Gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, why, why, do you, why do you do that? I mean, I, 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 have, I have an idea around why, but how is that, how does that benefit others, you, just connecting people with with others. What what does it do for you as a person, and and what have you seen it do for others? Honestly, man, and it's wow. That's a great question. I'm gonna take you back down memory lane for a second. For example, like one of the biggest culture shocks for me when I moved to Utah was when I saw a father with his son, and people were married, right? And people were owning homes, and the third one was entrepreneurship. That blew my mind. That blew my mind you know, from selling cookies to pest control to security. I'm like, what? How are you guys doing this? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, no, it's not going to do it. So I'm like, how? Like, yeah. tell me how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, one of the things, like, I, uh, I noticed, I'm like, wow, this is fascinating to me because, you know, uh, these are good people who are very selfless at the same time. You know, they're genuine here, like, wanting to help out people. Because I come from L.A., right, where it's, it's, it's all about what have you done for me lately. You know, I call it a sunshine state with shady people. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I've never heard that. <laughs> but 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 I say that because it gave me a good balance when I moved out here, seeing how people uh, are willing to help you, you know, and um, and who are selfless. And I don't know, it, it, it literally like I, I literally embodied that on a whole other level, and and I see how far it got me in life. So yeah, and no, all that, that that's that's a a very very important quality that that truthfully not a whole lot of people possess. Meaning. Mm -hmm. The willingness to help others with yeah. nothing expected in return. Exactly. And you made the comment that it does come back to you. It does come back to you in ways, N not even that you even expect it, but it does. Because um, I, I, you know, and I, I say this sincerely, I have a tremendous love for you as a, as a brother and friend. Oh, um, likewise. And and, it, and it's easy it's it's easy to know when you're dealing with genuine people and mm -hmm. the, a lot of the things that you do, both professionally and as a just a person, human human being. Um, You've got a good heart, man, and and that's why you're going places. And I want to talk about some of those places that you're going. Yeah. It's been crazy to watch how you have, you know, you started eight years ago. Yeah. And now you're suiting up some of the best of the best. I know some of the guys I'm watching on ESPN, you suited up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, I, I know that you suited up, uh, what, what's his name? Um, Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He looks good. Floyd Mayweather recently. Yeah. Floyd Mayweather? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean... I, I was watching. I was actually watching um, something where where Shannon Sharp was, you know, on screen, and the, uh, one of the guys that he was talking with was like, "This suit, man, whoa!" <laughs> and I'm like, "KB, that's KB right there." But um, yeah. you're suiting up all sorts of people mm -hmm. all over the place. Did you recently get your suits in a retail shop? We're still working on some right now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, ah, yeah man, I'm I'm super excited about this. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I probably I, I would mention them, but I'm gonna hold off. Just so, <laughs> so he's not gonna cut that, man. Um, anyway, that that's great. Um, so what else do you got going on? Uh, with I know you've been traveling outside of the country. Correct. A little. What what have you been doing? Uh, outside of the country. Uh, so outside of the country, and then uh, also domestically, um, I'm still focused on um, a lot of things I do. Um, with children, mm -hmm. um, you know, with kids and stuff like that, because I think it's easier to raise strong children than to repair broken men. Um, you know, kids who grew up behind an eight ball like how I did. So, like, my mission, my goal is to still um, go into the neighborhoods and uh, help out these kids and, you know, teach them, um, you know, let them know, like, I'm not a role model. That's not who I am, Scott. I'm a real model. I'm a real businessman. I'm a real entrepreneur. 
I'm a real college graduate. I'm a real husband, right? You have a higher chance of being a businessman, being a husband rather than going to the league. I mean, I can't be 6'9", 290 pounds. No offense to LeBron. I love LeBron. Yeah. <laughs> but but my bone structure and stuff like that. And uh, so um, I say focus on that, Scott. I really do because I feel like that's like my North Star for me. That's awesome. That is, a, that, that is really cool. So, um, you know, as far as you, you just mentioned that, you know, you may not be 6'9", but but you're ripped, man. Like, the, <laughs> I'd be like, hey, come on, KB, just rip off that shirt, bro. Like, let, let's let people see. You stay in great shape. How often are you working out? About five days out of the week. Five, five days? days out of the week. Mm-hmm. What kind of workouts do you do? I, I actually really do want to know this because you are ridiculously ripped. Yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, man, like, he's probably my top three, probably – one or two, it just depends uh, how I feel for a day. Floyd Mayweather, man, like the guy doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke. He's been doing it for 20 years. Because if anybody has ever tried boxing, try it. Try it, right? It's by far one of the hardest things because obviously I come from a track and field background, right? Right. Um, because, like, anybody can be a fighter. All it takes for you to swing your arms, right? But a boxer is the man with the IQ. It's a thinking man sport, right? And so you actually have to think, like, hey, this is what I'm going to do today for my body. Because, yeah, you know, when you have an outfit on, right, people tend to forget this. The um, reason why it's called outfit, you're out and you fit, right? <laughs> so I literally uh, have that mo- uh, that whole mamba mentality in my mind I at the same it. time, the too. Mamba mentality. <laughs> exactly. I love it. I love it. You know, this is really interesting. Go and search the toughest sport. Just just Google toughest sport, hardest sport. You know what shows up number one? Which one? Boxing. Yeah. Yeah. Boxing I, number one. I can see that. Boxing is – it's one of my all-time favorite sports. Yeah. Um, my, my grandfather was – I think I told you this. He was a Golden Glove boxer back in his day. Oh, man, get number, down. Number, he, ranked, told me that. he ranked number one, um, you know, in the uh, – I'm trying to remember what war it was, the Korean War, but all the armed forces, he was number one in get all the armed forces in boxing. Wow. So he, he taught he taught my brothers and I, all my cousins, he taught us all how to spar. To Where's he from originally? Here. He was actually he's, he's here from uh, um, Fillmore, Fillmore, Utah. Fillmore, Utah. Yes. Oh man, he can get down. Yes. That's what's yep, up, yep, man. Yep, yep. So he uh, he boxed all growing up and was was pretty incredible. So I at a young I at a very young age watched boxing. Yeah. I remember going over to Grandpa's house to watch HBO and watch Mike Tyson, you know, and oh, man. Vander Holyfield and oh, you know, sh- people you know, tend to forget about Holyfield. Foreman. Holyfield was nice. No, he's he's a great he's yeah. a great dude and yeah. he, he can he can he can brawl. So, mm-hmm. um, but I have I I love boxing. It it takes a special human being to get up into that ring and fight like that. It, I agree. It, and you do you do some of it like on the side or you do it working out a lot, don't you? Yeah, 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 both. Do you, yeah, do both. you compete? Uh, I used to compete, but Did you? yeah, uh, but you know, I was like, you know, I'm I'm going to business side. Going to business because you because know I mean? yeah. you know you get in there, man. You gotta. Takes That's us 110 percent, right. and like I'm very competitive. Like yeah. I'm wired different. Like when I'm in my zone, it's I'm, I'm gosh, God, it's, it, it gets bad. Like I'm very competitive. I don't like to yeah. lose. Oh yeah, I know, this. <laughs> I know this. I know this. I know this. So so boxing is a lot of fun. I actually saw an incredible boxing match. I didn't love how how it ended, but it was Ryan Garcia versus Tank. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> it, it, was, it was a good one, man. It was a, it was a, it was a battle. Tank's I, good. I, I, Tank's good. I, I didn't think he could he could beat Garcia. He did. Really? I didn't I didn't think he could. I you know I'm just looking at Garcia's wingspan and his mm-hmm. quickness. Tank Tank man, he he's no joke. He's a real deal. For him to knock to to TKO Garcia, put him on the mat mm-hmm. from a at liver punch. I yeah, mean, the liver body punch, shot ain't no joke. Yeah, I know. I, I think body shots are underlooked at times by, by boxers, man. They're going always going at the head. You are so uh, on point with that because, like, I'd rather get knocked out instead of taking a body shot because when you get a body shot, you have to endure that pain. Yeah. It sucks. And it, and it stays there for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the only experience <laughs> I ever had about a body shot was in high school. My junior year, I got hit – in the side of my Jeez. right, right in the side, helmet Jeez. right to the side, and I, I oh helmet, yeah, hel- oh helmet, yeah. full speed, right. I mean, you Jeez. don't at that age, most you don't have you know rib guards on, right? Back. Maybe quarterbacks do, but I didn't, right, right, right. Anyway, so it's it's painful. Anyway, so um, yeah, man, I want I want to talk through this. How many different suits do you have? Oh gosh, so my wife and I we just got done building in our house, so I have a different closet, like my closet, like a retail store. Like uh, how, I wouldn't doubt it. Like how your office is, it's it's a yeah. whole different entity, right? Yeah. Um, I probably have maybe I had to get rid of 
have. I'm, I'm probably at 120 now. 120. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I get. I get. I'm. I get creative, man. You know. How I oh, do. I know how. I know how it is. <laughs> okay, so this suit. This suit probably. I think I have six of your suits. It's about yeah. to be seven after yeah. today. Uh-huh. He suit me up for a three piece. You see what this guy's got on? He's got yeah. a three piece. Yes, sir. Last time I spoke to him, he's like, "It's time. It's time. It's time. Man. <laughs> it's time for that three piece." Um, so this probably ranks number one for me. What does this suit rank for you? This one. Do you have a favorite? I do. You do have a favorite? I don't. I don't. I'm <laughs> I lying. do. I don't. No. <laughs> it's, it's it's like you know. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, I, I just love the fact that I'm. I'm at a point where it's like I can go in my closet. I don't have to look. I can just grab anything and I just go out with it. So I don't have to look, whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. This will be the suit for the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, yeah, I, I mean, but my favorite, though, uh, if, if I have to give you a favorite, I love wearing a velvet uh, a velvet top. Really? Yeah, just class. I love class. Yeah, man, he, uh, he's taught me a lot when it comes to class, you know. And I, I'll tell you one of the things I'm struggling with and I was going to ask you about today mm-hmm is my sock game. And I'm, I'm like, this dude doesn't even have socks on. <laughs> no, 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 not around this time. So, so what, are, what are, give me a couple basic important traits around a good suit this day and age. Um, yeah. A couple things you taught me is you don't always have to be wearing a belt when you're wearing a suit. Absolutely not. Right, and, yeah. I, and I've always worn a, worn a belt, yeah. you know? He mm-hmm. says, stop doing that, Scott. And I'm like, okay. Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and what, let me, you also taught me about um, uh, shoes, shoes. So by the way, this is an unpaid endorsement. <laughs> this is probably the best dress shoe I've ever, ever owned. Nice. <laughs> and this is one of his shoes uh, yeah. that he got me into. I think I bought like five, yeah. four or five pairs of shoes. <laughs> this guy, this guy knows how to how to do it right. But um, tell me about shoes. Like, what what's what's an important thing to know about your dress shoes when you're getting into a suit? So you want to have a nice. Um, I like to have a bespoke shoe um, instead of something just off the rack, because by the end of the day, Scott, like the goal is to create your own story. Okay, I don't want you to look like anybody else. I know for a fact we can go to any NFL game or whatever the case may be, draft. No one's going to look like you, right? So I like to create your own story, right? And so having a nice shoe, that's the foundation of it because a shoe, what I like to do, have that to correspond with the buttons, okay? So when people start to see that, like those details when you're around suit enthusiasts, lawyers, doctors, businessmen, the whole nine yards, they know who has a custom suit on, right? They're going to sit back like, wait a minute, this guy doesn't have a belt on. Okay, he has a custom suit on. That's right. What does he do for a living, right? <laughs> that open up so many doors, you know, because, like, as one of those rule of thumbs, like, if you have a, um, a suit on, you're not supposed to button up two buttons, right? It's supposed to be one, right. okay? And when you have a custom suit, you're not supposed to wear a belt. That's what you pay for. It's supposed to fit you. You get what I'm saying? That's right. So that's how it goes. And obviously, like, you know, from, like, just the structure of the shoe, like how it's just pointed really nice. I like to do peak lapel, right? Because when you button it up, it looks like a V12. You come in there with some power. So by the end of the day, I call myself a um, fashion architect I like <laughs> when it, it comes down to it. I like it. You are. You're my fashion <laughs> ar- architect, right? Yeah. Um, so around around uh, not wearing a suit coat, if if a man's, you know, in a, dr- in a, in a you know business attire, mm-hmm. should he wear a belt without a suit coat on? Is that appropriate if yeah. it's tailored? Yeah, yeah. It, it is. So mm-hmm. if I if I have these tailored pants on mm-hmm. and I'm not wearing a suit coat, mm-hmm. I should be wearing a belt in that moment? No. 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 No, no. no. Not with those custom pants. Gotcha. <laughs> Take note. Take yeah, note. No, 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 no. Not with those custom pants, man. You know, a lot of a lot of men shy away from doing a tailored suit because they think it might be too much. And yeah, it is gonna cost you more, but why should a guy go with a tailored suit? I mean, you just kind of explained it, but I want to hear it again. Why? why? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, for example, Scott, like when you go buy something off the rack from your Nordstrom, your Dillard's, whatever the case may be, Tom Ford, whatever the case may be, the suit still doesn't fit you. You still have to go get it altered. Okay. By the time you end up spending so much money on alterations, you might as well just got you a custom suit. Just knock it out the ballpark, right? Right. Because you want something to fit your bone structure. So for me. Like I didn't, you know, it was hard for me because, um, cause, like I grew up knowing how to sew, right? And I was always a skinny cat. Cause, <laughs> I mean, I was skinny, <laughs> man. You know how many holes I had to, uh, 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 additional holes I had to put in my belt. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. my belt didn't fit yeah. me, or my pants didn't fit yeah. me, yeah. Yeah, 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 or yeah. whatnot. And so uh, I say that because I was just thinking about. I was going back down memory lane. It's so funny, but um, you know, you want something that fits you. Perfectly, because when we talk about a custom suit, this is the cool part about it. Um, 
when you get something off the rack and you want to let it out, it doesn't, right? But when you have a custom suit, we leave three inches of fabric inside of there so we can let it out. That's the unique part about having a custom <laughs> suit. And the cool part about it is um, suits are made in four different ways. You got full canvas, half canvas, fused, and unstructured, right? What does that mean? Fused, that's the cheapest way to make a suit, okay? It's just glued on, right? So right now, you can actually undo your buttons on your yeah. you know, on yep. your suit, right? Yep, yep. Okay, because this is handmade. Yep. When it's glued on, that means that it's fused. It's just a glued on suit. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So full canvas, like your suit and my suit, it's um, wool and horsehair between the lining and the fabric. So it drapes on your body really well. I don't know if you've ever seen somebody wear a suit and it pops off their chest like midair like this. Oh, yeah. Right? For sure. That means that it's just a fused suit. It's just an easy suit to make, right? right. But you want something that has class that will give you longevity because this suit's going to last you 20 years unless you gain – a hundred pounds. Yeah, right? <laughs> and, and if I if I may add to you, you, you know what another uh, tailored suit does for you? It keeps you accountable. That part <laughs> it keeps you accountable Absolutely. because if if you start feeling to get tight, you're like, it's time to get it's, real. It's, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta yeah. look good in the suit, so it keeps you accountable. Absolutely, it's, Absolutely. it's so true. <laughs> so another another thing I've noticed is so the ties. I feel like ties. You know, I always joke with my wife because she can go to the store. You know, to whatever shop she loves. She she can buy a number of dresses. Like th- they can they can have a dress right for oh every. Gosh. And there are some men that'll wear a suit mm-hmm. for years, mm-hmm. the same suit. And really, all you got to work with is a tie, right? And and tie ties are kind of like the dress for a dude. But tailored suits changes the game a little bit. But I, I want to talk about the tie game. Ties change. I noticed that you got a fat tie on right now. Yes, I do. Are the fat ties coming back in? Do they ever leave? Because I got this skinny tie on. I feel like this has kind of been the game. Mm-hmm. But maybe yeah, not. yeah, yeah. I mean, because like uh, it made its wave, right? So for me, um, so my style is predicated on like the 1920s and the modern day. So I actually intertwine both of them. So for example, you know, we talk about music, right? right. <clears throat> and uh, and seriously, guys, like Scott's music choice is amazing because like I I highly believe that you can tell a lot by a person by the kind of music they listen to. No doubt. And you listen to all kind of music, so that tells me that you're very well-rounded, right? Yeah. Thanks, man. So That's I, true. <laughs> so I say that because uh, I grew up listening to Motown music. So um, Marvin Gaye, The Temptations, Teddy Pendergrass, Stevie Wonder, the list goes on and on. The best. Right, the right? best. Love Motown music. Yeah. So for me, um, I get a lot of my inspiration from the uh, the uh, Temptations because I want to be like David Ruffin from The Temptation, the lead right, singer. Right. Even though they were way ahead of my time. Yeah. But my grandparents used to play it all the time. Yeah. And um, uh, I was like, you know, I like that purple suit. And so you'll see me wear like some really unique type colors and stuff. So I like to intertwine like uh, the uh, traditional and the modern together. That's good. So. Well, you do it right. You do it right. Appreciate it. So, all right, we want to have we want to have some fun, you know, as we we uh, we we close this thing down. I'm gonna ask you some whack questions. I call them whack questions. That's kind of what I've been calling them, huh, Michelle? Just to get to know you a little bit better. That's right. Do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's do it. So, if you first of all, what was the first concert you ever went to? Oh man, <laughs> this is this ought to be good. <laughs> Buster Rhymes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ludacris. That's, uh, a good, that's a good one. That's a good that one. That one right there was crazy. It was at Universal Studios in LA. And if y'all know Ludacris music, he can get you going. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's talented. Yeah. He's Luda. He's yeah. definitely talented. I was talented. in the seventh grade. And yeah. What was the first album you ever owned? First album I ever owned yeah. was uh, The Temptations. Who's an artist that people need to check out right now? Maybe a new one or could be. You introduced me to the internet, which I actually am a big fan yes. of. Yes. Yes. So, so good. Yes. So good. Yes. A- any others? This is me more just saying, I'm ready for some new music, bro. Let's yes. See what, what yes. Do you is there any that, that come um, to your mind? Yeah, because like, I'm an R&B guy, yeah. obviously. So like the internet, definitely check them out. As far as rap, I love uh, Fly Union. Fly very, Union. Yeah. Really, really great. Good one. Very, very poetic. Good. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you're much into superheroes, but who's your favorite superhero of all time? Superhero of all time? I'm a... I'm going to say Flash. Really? Yeah. That's a first for me. Like, I had, Flash is great. Flash. Have you seen the movie yet? Did you go see it? it not yet. Not it, comes, yet. it comes out, I think it came out this week. It's supposed to be great. Is it this week? Great, yeah, 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 I think it, this, yeah. This week. That's good. So why is Flash your favorite? I'm curious. Speed? Speed, man. Because you're fast. I mean, you're a track guy. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so speed is, you know, when you have speed, that's something you can't teach. No, it's not. You know? I mean, you can train and improve, mm-hmm. you know? Um, 
Did, so did, you did sprint. Would you sprint? Oh, meter would once in hurdles. Yeah, yeah, sprints. Uh, the hundred and ten meter hurdles. Yeah, no, sp- speed is everything. I mean, in every sport, in every sport, I just watched a YouTube video on the the fastest athlete from every professional sport. It was really interesting. Really? Yeah, I gotta check that all out all time. Like, I'll go. In fact, this leads me to my next question, and then I'm gonna go back to this because yeah. it's interesting. Who is the greatest athlete of all time? And when I say this, I'm not talking about like in their individual sport. I'm talking about as an athlete all around top to bottom this is a very interesting question it's become like one of my theme questions on the podcast i don't know why but who's the greatest athlete of all time in your opinion greatest athlete yeah it's a tough Ooh. one it can be tough i'm going to say i'm going to have to say deon sanders that's a good one see that's my number 2 who you got number 1 bo bo jack oh you got bo bo jack <sighs> Man. Bo Jackson, <laughs> yeah, Bo Jackson. I gotta ask you. I gotta ask. Yeah. Tell me why. Tell me why. Because Bo Jackson, from in in, in fact, I oh, I, I will say Jaron Hall yesterday probably gave the greatest reason, and that is top to bottom. You know, toe to top of your head. Yeah. This guy is built to be the greatest athlete of all time. Speed. So yes. so Bo Jackson was ranked number one for the NFL of all time in speed. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. This dude could jump out of a swimming pool. Right, with water to his shoulders, mm-hmm. he could jump out of the water and land on his feet. Mm-hmm. Come on, and and I mean, baseball. To, to be the other thing, Jaron said is to be able to play baseball at that level and football at that level. There's not many people doing that. Dion did it, absolutely. But Dion wasn't an all star like Bo was. Always, always. Okay, and so the I, I to me. To me, Bo's the greatest athlete of all time. You got Bo? I got Bo. I mean, oh man, Bo, Bo's that guy. Deion's Bo, incredible, I, though. Because, because the reason why um, I said it, because I'm a football guy. Anybody who knows me, I love football. Yeah. I'm yeah. a football guy a thousand percent. One of the things is um, I have to humble myself because I'm like, okay, which one requires more skill, right? You will never see an NFL player transition to the NBA. Interesting. You'll see a basketball player transition to football all the time. Antonio Gates, uh, Tony Gonzalez, yep. the list goes on. Yep. And you know, t- people tend to forget that Deion Sanders, he was uh, uh, All American in basketball. Yep. So he yep. was just so. Was, I, I, so I look at it as, as a overall, but but Bo was still that guy too. I mean, he was good. I respect that one. Yeah, it's a good, yeah, yeah. it's a good one. Well, Deion was asked, "What's the toughest thing that anyone can do in all of sports?" Yeah. And, and he, you know, what he said. I think it was. I think the comparison was made in all of sports. I could be wrong, but but I watched him talk about the hardest thing that he ever had to do with it as an athlete was hit a baseball. Hit, hit a baseball. Hit a you baseball. would never think that, right? Hit a baseball. Man, that's crazy. Yeah. 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 I, I love talking about athletes. They, they yeah. fascinate me. Okay. Um, let's go to another question. So I know your wife. I'm going to ask you to admit to her biggest pet peeve about you. <laughs> oh, if she had to say... <laughs> a pet peeve around you. What would she say? This uh, is always a fun one. That woman, man. <laughs> she hates it when um, I leave my clothes on the side. On right? the side of what? The bed. Oh my! My I don't wife. Know if that's a guy thing. No, my wife does the tub. She throws it over our tub. Oh really? No, I'm probably the most. You would die if you saw how organized my my uh, closet is. But but a lot of guys do what you just talked about. Yeah, and and, and so so the part that really like gets her going is when I put the shirt back on. <laughs> <laughs> right. She's like, that's dirty. I was like, no, it's not. I'm it's fine. I'm like, yeah, fine. Yeah. I go, yeah. I'm going to the gym, man. She hates that. She that's, hates that. That's great. So that's something I had to work on. That's great. And how long have you and your wife been married? This year in July would be six years. Dang, man. Yeah. That is awesome. That is awesome. What's next for Kenneth Boggs? What's next in, what's your next goal as far as the business is concerned? I know you're suiting up everyone, but yeah. where, where are you going with this next? I want to start to own my own manufacturer. So I want to start that. And, nice. uh, you know, we're in the talks with a couple of things. And I want to, you know, um, you know, I actually want to do it out in Ghana, Africa, because their craftsmanship is just so up to par. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Really, really good, man. You, you have to go out there one day. Like, I, w- I, I would love to go with you whenever you go again. Yeah. So I know you're very particular. Mm-hmm. I mean, have you identified folks can really put the put the suits together as well as you would expect? Yeah. Really? It's very impressive. And and this is not even, like, they don't even have the same technology how we do here. It is night and day. I'm like, 
you literally did this. It's, I can't even explain it to you. I have to show you an image. You're like, what? Wow. Like, how do they do that? But it's it's very, very, uh, like, craftsmanship is amazing. Who, I had a couple who, things made already. Wow, that's cool. Uh, this brings me to another question. What what area in the world is the kingpin of suit making? I'm going to have to say Spain. Yeah, Spain. Spain. I love Spain. Spain. Is Italy up there, too? Italy's up there. So, so for me, because, like, I get a lot of my inspiration also from the uh, the uh, British culture. Mm-hmm. So as you can see, like the window mm-hmm. pane, the plaid, and stuff like that. But the cut, I just love how Spain knocks it out. Uh, Italy, uh, definitely top five for sure. Easy. That's good. Okay. Well, I'm gonna close it out with a with a, a question. One of the things I love about you, man, is you are absolutely filled with wisdom. And I appreciate that. A lot. I've had a lot of. Uh, I've had a lot I have a lot of memories around different stories that you've told me and experiences that you've had. You you are well-rounded. Um, but I want to I want to end this with a question, but more of I, I would like to hear a statement out of you directed at young people. Mm. Young people. Yes. What wisdom would you give to them? Let let's let's say you're talking right now to a young 14, 15, 16, 17-year-old boy. Let's let's even say 18. What would you tell them right now? as far as helping them to understand what they are capable of and how they can go and fulfill what they're here to do in life. How do you, how, what would you say to them? What should they focus on right now? A lot of times I like to ask this stuff because you know, I, have, I have sons and a daughter. Oh, that's a great question. Um, what would you tell them? To, to, what would your parting words with them as they go out in the journey of life, what would you tell them to focus on and do? I love that so much. Wow, that's a deep, deep question. Man, did he even ask anybody else that deep question? That's a deep one, bro. I like that. I don't know if I really asked that question. <laughs> I, I, I'm asking you because for I know sure. I know I'm gonna get an answer that yeah, that, that for sure. will resonate. I'll tell you two folds, man. One, I want you to focus on discipline, right? A lot of us will self self sabotage to avoid self discipline, and uh, you know one of the things is um, like my grandfather used to always tell me, uh, we all have decisions in life, right? You know, you're born looking like your dad, but you die by looking like your decision. So the decision is yours. This is what I'm talking about. (laughs) Wait, say that one more time. Say that one more time. You're born looking like your dad, but you die by looking like your decisions. I've never heard that. Okay, that's a good one. That's amazing. (laughs) All right, did you say that there was a second thing that you were going to mention? That was uh, the the second one, but the first one was discipline, and and, and the second one is your choice. I, I love that. I love discipline. Absolutely. You know, I I I, uh, I believe that a man without discipline that doesn't have his why or reason, he'll fill his life with things that do not matter and personal pleasure. Absolutely, absolutely. And my dad, absolutely yeah, love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, man, he goes and fills life. He doesn't have a reason. He fills it with pleasure yes. and things that don't matter. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I agree with that. I think I think the young men and women of this world need to focus on discipline. Yes. Oh, and yeah. and if you can discipline yourself, you really can do anything because most of success comes in in life comes from being disciplined and focusing and oh, being consistent. Yeah. And because you've consistently been wearing that good looking suit, because you've yeah. consistently been making efforts to network right. and get your suits on others, right? There will only be more who wear a Kenneth Boggs suit. Absolutely. Like it, I'll tell you right now, and, 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 you know, KB's not paying me to say this, but the best suits I've ever worn have come, you know, the hands of this man right here. This guy, <laughs> this guy, uh, this guy it. does it right. And, and I'll probably be wearing your suits for the rest of my life. And it's just a mission. You got to be consistent if you want to become a player in the suit game. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and you're doing it. I appreciate so, it, brother. Anyway, I love you, brother. I appreciate you. Love you too, I appreciate you being here with me and, uh, and, and having this chat. And we always close it out with the number one cereal of the guest. And this one happens to be KB's. <laughs> Absolutely. Apple Jacks, baby. <laughs> Apple Jacks. Appreciate it's a, it, man. It's a good one. So yeah, man. we know you probably don't eat stuff like that, but oh, you're yes, going I do. to, yeah, I, I would hope so. I do. I would hope so. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> thanks guys for being here. Appreciate it, brother. Yep. Oh, hey, what, one last thing. Where do people find you? Where do people find you on social media? Oh, I just type in uh, Kenneth Box. Uh, I should be able to pop right up. Uh, you know, if you ever want to do a couple of things, especially in the state of Utah, uh, community-wise, um, I'm on the board of uh, Utah Foster Care. You know, we need as much help as possible. We would love for you guys to embark upon all the events and the activities that we have going on. So, 
Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And the last thing I'll say is this man's up for an award that's coming from the governor of the state, so be watching for that. Uh, yep. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs>